Earlier this year, I went to the Rio Grande Valley sector and heard directly from our border agents about what they needed to properly secure our border. I recently returned to the border, this time the El Paso sector, which, if you recall, was roundly criticized for how they operated their processing centers when trying to accommodate the massive influx of tens of thousands of migrants crossing the border illegally. So how much of the media narrative was really true? What were our border agents really dealing with? I went to the El Paso sector to see for myself why these facilities have been so overcrowded and to answer an important question, how can Congress help alleviate this crisis? What's up, y'all? We're at the Paso Norte Port of Entry. Uh, there is a uh, detention facility here, a processing station, and uh, I am here with the Division Chief Blanchard. And uh, there's a lot to learn about this particular place. Now, um, we're at a point where only a few weeks ago, we were completely overwhelmed. There's thousands of migrants coming through here. This place is only really uh, designed for a couple hundred. Uh, you saw the news stories right over there under the bridge where we had to shelter migrants. Um, give me a sense of okay, why were we overwhelmed and why is it much emptier right now? Well, at the time, we were having an unprecedented surge of uh, folks entering illegally here in El Paso sector. Uh, it was untenable. There were 1,200 people here at the high water mark in May. Uh, I think it looks this way now uh, for several reasons. Uh, number one, the uh, Mexican government has really stepped up, in, uh, yeah. as we see them all over the river, and they are thwarting illegal entries, and they are deporting people from uh, the south of their country, and the Migrant Protection Protocols, MPP, has really helped alleviate the population. Okay. Describe what those are, the Migrant Protection Protocols. Um, citizens, folks who are not from Mexico, and they cannot be unaccompanied alien children, yeah. uh, primarily sub, uh, Central American, all Spanish-speaking countries, mm -hmm. they come over here, we process them, and we send them back to Mexico where they await their immigration proceedings. Okay. And, and that applies to just adults? And family units. And family units, too. Okay. Yes. So we are able to send some family units back, but not everybody. <laughs> and the word gets out. I mean, the word, word gets out that... You, can't just come here and be caught and released and that's actually had a, quite a big effect on, on how many people are choosing to just cross. We believe so, yes sir. Okay. Can you help me understand why things get bottlenecked here sometimes? Sure. So based on the legal means that we have to, to take on a company children and, and place them in a shelter, we have exactly one avenue for that. It mm -hmm. has to go to Health and Human Services Office of Refugee Resettlement. Right. Uh, they have the capacity and the legal obligation to place those kids. Uh, so they contract with a number of facilities, foster care uh, capabilities, and they're continually having to also expand and, and push that, that envelope. Uh, when they don't have enough uh, bed space, enough mm -hmm. uh, shelter space to, to provide for the, the children that we're encountering, uh, they have to stay with us. We Again, we only have one right. legal route. You can't just let them loose. Correct. I mean, they're, they're unaccompanied minors. Right. And I have no legal ability to place them in any other shelter system. They have to go through ORR. Right. Uh, so when they don't have the space, we're having to hold them. So and Right. Again, and that's why you see it piling up here. I mean, correct. that's why you see so many people and then yeah. you, 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 your resources start to dwindle. Well, and a good example is so there's, you know, 10 kids get placed in a day. Well, that same day I encountered 40 more. And that right. happens day after day. And pretty soon I'm over, you know, five or 600 kids. Easy. Got it. Thank you. So we're on our way from the Clinton border station to El Paso border station and root causes are a real important part of this entire discussion when it comes to securing the border. Um, one thing that often gets brought up, but I'm not sure well explained, is the Flores settlement. You might go into that for a minute from 1997 to 2017 and what the Flores settlement actually means for our immigration system. In 1997, uh, the Flores decision stated that we could not hold unaccompanied alien children for more than 20 days. Right. And it was that way for 20 years. In uh, 2017, uh, all juveniles were encompassed in, in the uh, Flores settlement, which means even family units. Right. Get each other. 
And so this means that a family unit can come across, and a family unit being an adult and a, and a child, because it's often hard to even prove that, if, even if they're not family, it's hard to prove that. This means that we can't hold them, which means we can't adjudicate their claims, whether that's an asylum claim or just adjudicating the fact that they cross the border illegally, right? Which means, by default, we have to release them. Is that basically what happens in practice? Yes, by uh, 20 days is the standard for holding a child, any child, and it takes much longer than that to adjudicate a case. Uh, it, it takes months, and on the non-detained dockets, those who are released, it takes years, sometimes because of the backlog and the, uh, the few number of immigration judges that we have. And, and everybody crossing the border basically knows this, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, they do. So we're seeing it over and over again. I think even family units split themselves up so that the mother can take a kid across and the father will split themselves up and take another kid across uh, so that they both, both knowing that they'll be released and in, into the country. We've seen that, yes, sir. So we have this problem with the Flores settlement, but what's the solution? The solution is that Flores needs to be extended or some mechanism we can extend the time we can hold yeah. families and children until their cases can be adjudicated. Right. And uh, more immigration judges will also be a big part of that, I'm assuming, so we have more people actually hearing in these cases. I mean, we don't have, we simply don't have the resources right now. Right. We don't have enough judges to handle the throughput, to handle a good throughput. Right. So... Uh, less restrictions on how long we can hold people who have legally crossed our border and actually more judges to hear those cases because the reality is we don't want to hold them very long and nobody really wants that. The reason Flores settlement came to be was for humane purposes. We don't want to hold people uh, in custody that long. So we need more immigration judges. So final stop of the day. We are at El Paso border station here. Uh, this is called station one. This is where they bring family units uh, it's a slow day today. Uh, overall, again, a couple of things have worked quite well. Uh, the Mexican government working with us uh, and, and the, uh, the migrant protocols where we can actually send family units to Mexico to wait uh, for their proceedings. Uh, that's deterred a lot. Um, right now, what we just saw was uh, quite a few migrants, about 15 or so, who were, it was shown that the children with the adults were not actually their children. And so what Border Patrol does is they don't just go about this uh, in a haphazard way. If they're not sure, they'll do a DNA test because we want to ensure that these kids aren't being trafficked. This is a big thing that happens. Again, we've, we've gone over that uh, and how the incentives encourage people to take children with them. And uh, Border Patrol is just trying to wrap their arms around that problem and prevent that kind of thing. And they see it every single day. This trip was about exposing the truth on the border. Despite the false narratives that Democrats continue to spread about these facilities and their conditions, it's clear those things simply aren't true. We don't need more politicians virtue signaling and vilifying our border agents. We need a comprehensive solution to the situation that includes addressing the Flores settlement and other loopholes in the system, fixing the legal restraints that cause bottlenecking and overcrowding, and investing in innovative programs like DNA testing to combat human trafficking. We have to talk about what is really happening at the border. Every issue from overcrowding to child smuggling is a consequence of Congress's inaction to supply funding and implement proper policy, nothing else. It is time for the sake of our country that Congress finally acts.